Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. So in this video, we're going to be pouring this two level, very tight spaced area of concrete patio. Now this is actually going to be a concrete patio for a restaurant in a, in a really popular downtown area in Maine. And you know, it, this is going to be a two part video. So the first part here is going to be about porn. And then the second part, I'll have it linked at the end of this, this video will end up being how we stamp it and how it looks like the finished product, you know, after everything got completed here. So, and it came out looking really, really cool. You're not going to believe how nice this thing looks when they got done with it. So make sure if you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe so you can come back and see how this looks. And for you guys that are subscribers, you know, I'd appreciate it if you if you'd watch that that uh, part two video to see how this looks and then leave me a comment in the comments. And let me know what you think. So we got this. Like I said, we got this really tight area in between these two buildings. And this used to just be a walking area to get from a parking lot out to the main road. The main road is behind that wooden wall. And, you know, it's, it's a really popular shopping district and there's all kinds of restaurants and stuff like that. But this guy here that owned the restaurant, the guy that owns the building on the left, he also owned this area. So he wanted to turn it into some type of, of outdoor seating with a covered deck and stamped concrete. So that's what we're doing here. We've got two different levels going on. We're on the bottom level now and then it... It steps up a couple steps into this top level and then where the concrete truck is you know up here there's actually another level a third level to it so there's gonna be three different levels to this project and right now we're doing the, the first two levels the bottom level and the middle middle part and we're gonna get the concrete poured today and we're also gonna get it stamped so you'll get to see how we, we pour it and then Part two, you'll get to see what we use for a stamp and what the finished product looks like. So we, we're using a conveyor truck today. This conveyor will reach about 40 feet, and that's just about what we needed to reach here. So we didn't feel like we needed a pump truck. The conveyor truck is is less than half the money of a pump truck. So if we, if we can get away with just using a conveyor, that's what we try to do, save the people a little bit of money. And it's just about as easy as using a pump truck. So we're getting the down, the down, uh, the the bottom patio area poured, and it's all slopes. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a trench drain to the right, up against that building to the right. There's probably about two or three inches of space between that trench drain and that other building. That that area there that has gray tape on it, that long thin area is actually a drain. So we're sloping the patio to the trench drain. Instead of having all the water run right out into the road, we're going to try to get it to run into that drain. And you can see we got wire mesh in there. I'm pulling it up. I got my wire hook. I'm pulling it up. And we're pouring a 4,000 PSI mix with fiber mesh in it. 3-8 stone. So it's like a pea stone mix. That's the type of mix we like to stamp. I like the smaller aggregate when we're stamping. It just stamps a little bit easier on the surface that way. And we're getting a bunch poured out up here on this, this upper level while Luke's down there. He's got a small screed and he's finishing screeding that bottom level. And then he's going to get it bolt loaded. And he's going to take his time and do a really good job bolt floating because we're stamping this. Now we're pouring up against the stone. That stone there on the left is actually part of the foundation to the building. So they couldn't remove it. They couldn't cut it out. So we're, we're just pouring up against it, but we've got some ISO strip in there. So we got a little piece of foam in between the, the concrete and the, the rock, just in case if something does want to move, you know, it's not going to chip and break up all the concrete. So what we're doing is we're striking our pad, magging our edges smooth, and then we're going to turn the screed and screed it from the rock, sloping towards the drain. Hey, if you guys, if you guys want to learn how to do concrete like we do, I mean, I specialize in concrete flat work. I do all kinds of stamping, floors, slabs, patios, pool decks, you know, all kinds of concrete flat work. We do epoxy floors. We do a pair. You know, I got a program called the Concrete Underground. It's my private membership where I mentor and I coach people on 
on how to do concrete, how to start your own business, how to run your own business. So there's a link for that down below. If you want some coaching and some mentoring on how to do this stuff, just click on that link and it'll it'll bring you to the area where you could join my private membership if you want and just get some more advanced type skills, training, one-on-one -on -one coaching. You know, you can ask me questions in the forum there and I can help you out. So that's what the concrete underground is for. So you can see how we're screeding and getting that concrete to slope towards that drain. Right now, me and Luca over there on the right, just magging the concrete around that drain. There's about two or three inches on the other side of the drain that butts up against that other building. And then we're pouring right up against the drain here on this side. And we've got about four, there's four to five inches of concrete going in here. You can see Luke's pulling the wire up as we're going, getting the wire up, getting some concrete under that wire. Once you get some aggregate and stone from the concrete under the wire, it doesn't go all the way back down to the bottom, even if you walk on it. Sometimes we'll have what we call slab bolsters under the wire holding it up. Um, the general contractor I'm working for on this project was, was in charge of all the prep work, so he didn't put them under the wire. So he just asked if we could pull the wire up on this project so that's what we're doing we were just hired to pour and stamp the concrete here today so that's what i'm talking to you about and that's what i'm showing you what we're doing so it, it was a pretty tight area you can that screed is about a is about a 14 foot screed so we got about a 16 foot wide area and like i said there's two different levels it steps down a couple steps to that bottom area and we're just getting this screeded and bolt floated and when we stamp concrete you know we like to bolt float it really really nice you can see Luke's gonna take his time get it really really smooth so we only have to go over it once by hand we'll get on some skids if you guys don't know what skids are you know you can come back to watch part two to see how I use the skids and get on the concrete and get it mag floated out before we stamp it so part two of the video will be popping up here at the end once I get part two done. And uh, there will also be a link for it down in the description below. You can see how Darren keeps magging his edge clean to make sure, you know, he have no buildup out on the edge because that's what he's going by when he's wet screeding. He's, he's doing what we call him kick screeding. So we, we kick our feet and we fill our foot tracks in as we screed backwards. And I'm over there on the right, and I'm using the trench drain as my guide to go by. And now what we're doing is we're going to use, now Luke's grabbed the little screed, because we're right about at the end of the pour. And he's just going to turn and screed his way down so we can, we can work our way out of here. Because we got basically one spot to work our way out of. So as we get, as we get down to the end, everybody's jumping out. And we're trying not to get too much concrete in here so we don't have to shovel any out. So we're just going to take our time on this end and get it as close as we possibly can. You can see how Luke's, he's got about a five foot screed there. And he's just making sure both ends of his screed are making contact with the previously screeded area. So he's, he doesn't have any dips, he doesn't have any humps, he's got that nice and level. He's just working his way backwards, making sure that area is screeded really nice. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to finish it off by bull floating this. You can see how that bull float pushes down all the aggregate. You know, we don't need to, we don't need to vibrate this any. We don't need to, to jitter bug it and, and push down the aggregate before we bull float. This mix we're using with about what we call a five or a six inch slump, it, uh, it works really good just from bull floating it so the bull float will push down the aggregate and get it all consolidated and bring up enough paste and cream for us to finish whether we're doing a trial finish or a stamp finish it's both the same you can see how smooth that gets that and then like i said before we stamp it you'll see that in part two we're going to go over it by hand and mag float that surface out one time to get those bull float lines out and give us a really good surface to stamp so that's how we poured this area in a really tight quarters using a conveyor truck. Now make sure you subscribe and come back and see part two. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.
defense here. 